All right, folks, I have a new, I call, I'm calling it a micro hydroponic system, and it kind of is because there's only one relatively small grow bed in it. Um, but it's really not that micro. That's a 40 gallon breeder. Um, so there's a lot of rock displacement there. It's probably holding about 30 gallons ish of water uh, at its height. Uh, but I wanted to show you how it worked. I want to answer some questions. I want to tell you why I built it. Uh, honestly, I'm not building, I didn't build this one to feed my family or feed myself. Um, long term, I might even experiment with growing some stuff for the, the chickens or something with it. I don't know. I built it as an educational tool. As you guys can see, there's my, uh, my indoor farm over there. I've got another hydro system. I've got huge aquaponic systems on the property. This was built for educational purposes for what I'm doing right now on YouTube. And it was also built for the purpose of an educational tool for students that come to my workshops here. And I wanted to take a little bit of a different approach. So let's start out with the tank. Uh, I am an aquarist, uh, not an Aquarius, an Aquarius. That means I have uh, a fondness for aquariums. Uh, I really like to do planted tanks. This one is not gonna be a planted tank. Those are fake plants. I might get rid of those. I have some pretty cool looking silk plants uh, that look a lot more realistic that I think will add some color and some pop to the tank just for aesthetics. Uh, that's not really why it's built anyway, but I, I just, that was available. It was front of a tank kit that I bought. I never used it because I usually don't use plastic or, or even silk plants. I use live plants, but I don't want to run a live plant system out here. Uh, I don't need another tank to maintain at that level. So there's a lot that comes with planted tanks. All this rock, this is rock from my property. When you guys hear me talking about rock in the property and how bad the rock is, this is that first layer of chunk rock. There's no dirt, it's all rock like this, but at least it'll come up when you dig it up with an excavator. The next layer is that same rock, but it's flat, it's polished, it looks like a sarcophagus if you, if you, if you uh, manage to dig it out at all. Anyway, um, I just have a big pile of this laying around for obvious reasons, and I thought it would work out. Now the fish that you're seeing there, those are mosquito fish, gambrosias, and they're mainly in there to be eaten. That's their main purpose in life right now. Uh, we'll see how long they last. I can tell you, I have gazillions of these guys in my systems throughout the property. And every year in spring, when they really start to explode in population, I go out in the wild and I catch some fresh uh, genetics and bring them in to my ponds. Um, these are just great little guys. They, uh, they, they eat lots of mosquitoes. And by keeping them in my ponds, I don't have much of a mosquito problem. And I'm feeding my fish. What I'm feeding, I don't know if they want to come out right now. You can see there's one there. There's one hiding in there. There's actually a couple bullhead catfish in here. There's another little, but there's sunfish. There's like three bluegills and two what I think are basically hybrid uh, crosses of bluegills crossed with green sunfish is what I think that they are. Uh, these little uh, sunfish will interbreed in these little park ponds I get them out of here and there. Um, there's so many, so much variety in there and so much excessive breeding. Uh, a lot of these ponds, they, they seem to be worried about people taking too many fish, and they don't have anybody taking any fish hardly at all. What they really need is a depopulation of these guys. Uh, I have caught fish from the pond these guys came from that were literally that big and had eggs in them in the fall. They breed in the spring, guys, and they're supposed to breed at about four to five inches. It's, uh, it's definitely a stunted case. So these are some bigger ones that will eventually graduate out of here. There's a bluegill uh, right there. Anyway, so uh, they are probably picking these guys off. I'll probably give them some more today. And eventually I'll get them onto more of a, uh, a pellet-based feed because it's just easier to maintain through the winter. They won't eat that much through the winter. But that's the tank. And it could be a tank inside a house that's not doing anything except being a tank. To do what I've done, there's one thing you got to give up with aquariums that really kind of sucks unless you want to get really elaborate. And that is, if you'll notice, this is on an old oak table that's uh, only about 18 inches high at the bottom and that means I'm sitting on my butt on the ground right now and it's pretty cool sitting here watching these fish hang and hanging out with them but if this was indoors this is not ideal height for an aquarium at all if you go to an aquarium store and you look at stands that come with aquariums you'll find that they're all about the same height but even when they're not when certain aquariums have different heights this way when they're custom built the center of the aquarium will be about the same height on any every stand that that aquarium goes with across because there's an average height that is most pleasing to the eye to put something like that in your home. Now, the problem with that is it's about up there where that window is. And if our tank is here, then our grow bed would have to be up here with Mr. Deer. 
right? And then our light would have to be up at where his antlers are. So the problem with anything when you start to do multiple levels and plants and lighting systems is the higher that is, the higher the grow bed has to be. So you'll need to think about that. There's ways around that. If you can get a tank that can be drilled and some tanks have glass that can be drilled and some can't, this one has a, had a sticker on it that said, do not drill this tank. So you can look up videos on that. Some tanks come pre-drilled. So what I'm talking about is on the backside of the tank, you have a bulkhead penetration in the glass itself. Some tanks are plex tank, tank, plexiglass tanks. Those uh, can obviously be drilled. You have a bulkhead, you can set an overflow. Then you run the tank and a sump underneath it. And there's a lot of tanks that nobody wants to do any kind of aquaponics with that are run with sumps anyway. It gets into some money, but it is a way you can make a very attractive tank system. And then you would be able to feed your aquaponics system, which would be on the same level as your tank now, out of your sump. You just need just barely enough to overflow back into your tank. And then you could overflow the tank back to the sump. Or you could overflow the aquaponics to the sump and the tank to the sump kind of running in simultaneous pumpings. That's that's an aquarium lesson. Let's just get on with how this works. The biggest question I've gotten since I've switched to what I'm doing here is how the hell do these siphons work? They're not siphons. That's how it works. It's not a siphon. It's an ebb and flow system. There is no siphon. There can't be a siphon. See that? That one right there? That's the overflow height. That's how high the water will get. Eh, maybe a little more because of how the speed's running. See that bulkhead in the bottom? There's just two bulkheads, an overflow and a delivery. Okay, here's your delivery right here. It goes down to a little 400 gallon pump. That 400 gallon pump is vented. I don't know if you can see right there, there's a swing valve in there because I don't need anywhere near the, the flow out of that pump to go into there. That pump is made by Allied Aqua. It has a throttle right on it. So I've backed it down a little bit and then I've controlled how much flow I get by how open that valve is. This is important because I can push more water in here, right, through that bottom hole, then this one can return. This one's under pressure, this one's under gravity. So you do have to control one way or another. Another way you can do that, you can put a, a valve in your delivery line. The key is how wide open that valve is is gonna have a lot to do with how fast the water comes back out. How's the water come back out? Let's turn it on to show you. I've got a timer here. We're on a 15 on, 45 off cycle right now. I'm going to manually kick that on. You'll notice, see how the water's moving now? So that's great, because now I'm getting circulation in the tank. By blowing that valve up against this corner, it's creating a, a cross blow, and that's just good for the tank health. That's aquarium stuff. But now, water's coming in through the bottom. And it'll take a little bit, but it will fill all the way up to this stack. It will start to overflow. Once it starts to overflow, then this pipe right here is attached to that bulkhead, and the water will simply return to the tank. That's all there is to the cycle when it's running. And I'm just going to kind of talk about some other things while that fills up for you here. Like, hey, we got some stuff planted. These are just some overflow little lettuce and Swiss chard and some other lettuce and some, some celery I pulled out of one of my other systems, a little seedling. We'll see how it goes. I've got some garlic planted back here. Let's see, these have been in here for like two days. See that? This is when I buy garlic from the store. I use all the nice easy cloves to cut up and all the little fiddly ones like this, like that's just a pain in the butt. What I do with them is I stick them in my systems. And then within a week, they have green stalks up about this high, and I use them like chives. They just taste really delicious. And I just keep cutting them until they finally poop out, and you get 20, 30 cuttings before that clove is kind of done all it can. Um, here's the situation I have right now. This is something very important to understand about aquaponics. An aquaponics system, by definition, if it's done properly and you're actually running straight aquaponics, is overfished and overfiltered. So there's too many fish for that system to be healthy under a normal aquarium situation where we're doing, just doing aquaculture, we're just growing fish. But we have so much filtration, and this is biology, right? These little guys here, these are huge amounts of surface area. And all the bacteria that develop in these tanks, this nitrifying bacteria, ends up colonizing these filter media. And every time that cycle runs, and we got other filtration going on, all that rocks, all that rock got surface area. There's there's filtration going on there because that water's moving across it. 
that's how we balance an aquarium. Nitrate, nitrite cycle. But the way we're doing things right now, well, not right, the way we do things when we do aquaponics, we put so many fish in there that normal filtration would not be enough and those fish would die. It's overstocked. This tank is moderately, mildly, minorly overstocked based on the one inch per gallon rule, but it's really not overstocked enough. But I can't go too fast out of the gate. We got to build up that population. There's five bluegill, sunfish, perch, call them what you want to in there, and two bullheads. And they're not eating a lot yet. I don't think like I said, the minnow populations are dwindling, but nowhere near what they need to be eating to produce enough waste to make this work. But the system is not established yet. However, that acting as a filter right there is so overkill for this tank. Another thing I have here, you see those air bubbles coming up? I have what's called a sponge filter running here. And this sponge filter, if this was normally stocked as an aquarium, like with tropical fish or whatever, would be enough to run this whole tank. All this is is an air, to, air hose comes in here, pumps water into the bottom of this thing, and it causes water to flow through this very core sponge. These are made by a company called Aquarium Co-op. I love the guy. His name's Corey that makes these. They're the best ones on the market. So I'm getting aeration and filtration from one little $7, you know, PetSmart air pump right there. That's all this tank would need if it was just an aquarium. We have to bring the stocking rate up to where we're getting enough nitrogen, nitrite, nitri nitrate, nitrite cycle going on with the bacteria to provide the nutrients the plants need. But we're not doing that right now because there's not enough fish and i want to get it growing i want it to look cool when the students get here in about a month so what's going on how are we getting that done well some stuff i've learned from my hydro system over there we need to do an update on that where i'm trying to not use chemical fertilizers see that dusty looking stuff this is one of those rapid rooter uh plugs i'm so enthralled with see those little that, that's arugula what I do is I dust these with Dr. Earth fertilizer. I need to start adding a little pinch of blood meal for a more of a nitrogen kick to do that. So that's helping. So now we've got some fish waste. We've got the filtration, we've got the irrigation, we've got the oxygenation, but we've also got a nutrient kick. The other thing, mix up a little bit of Dirt Doctor, right? Dirt Doctor's Garrett juice. And every day, and people say, that's a lot of work. No, it's not, there it is, it's done. Right, so by doing that, we're giving that little extra nutrient kick and I'm doing some stuff like that with the farm. So anyway, we've got it working now. You can see what I'm talking about. Water's coming in the bottom, overflowing the top, going back here. So how's the water get back out? It gets out the way it comes in. So we're gonna kick the timer off manually. Again, that comes on 15 minutes then goes off for 45. And immediately you can see the water level's dropping. All it's doing is going straight back out the hole it got it came in at. This is actually very common when I started getting into hydroponics. This is why I like multidisciplinary stuff instead of being a zealot on one thing. I found this. I've, I've watched thousands of aquaponics videos. I've never seen this. I will never build a bell siphon again ever infinity, probably not anyway. This is so superior. There's nothing to fail. There's no, the only thing that fails is the pump. If the pump fails with the bell, bell side, and you got the same problem. This can't stick on the top, stick on the bottom, get clogged, etc. That, that bulkhead's wide open. There it goes. And it's just draining right out. And how's it getting out? If you don't have a valve, it'll go all the way back down. And as long as you don't have a backflow preventer in your pump, which a lot of pumps come with one, don't put it in if you want to do this. It'll backflow through the pump. But remember our friend, the swing valve right there? That water's just going right back in there because it doesn't matter. It's underwater. It's lower than here. As long as it's lower, gravity's gonna do its thing. So you're gonna have an ebb and flow down here, tidal, and you have an ebb and flow up here in your filter. So that's how this little system works. As far as the light, this is not the best terrestrial plant light. This is actually a light that's made for aquariums, but it was, if you look at the length of it, and you look at this little seven gallon concrete mixing tray, these are like five bucks at Home Depot. I got more money in the bulkheads than I do in the mixing tray. Bulkheads are about three bucks a piece. These are made by Lifeguard Aquatics. I'll put a link in the uh, video notes for you where you can get these uh, bulkheads. Uh, you notice they have silicon around them. Do you know why I do that? They don't need it, but it doesn't hurt nothing, and I don't want it to leak. So that's a little uh, extra measure that I take there. I put a little bit of G GE number two silicon around them. It's fish safe. And uh, there you go. That's the system. If you have any questions on this, how this works, et cetera, let me know. Now, remember... 
This is not really designed to be a massive productive system. But I do think if you look at what's going on here, two of those grow beds right there could grow quite a bit of food, especially through your winter. A system like this, now this is knocked together with an old oak table. I reinforced it with some two by just because it's old, even though it's oak. I knocked that little stand together there with the nail gun and some reinforcing screws and stuff with some scrap wood in about 35 minutes with no idea other than, hey, let's make it fit. Uh, slapped out. That doesn't look real attractive, I know, but you could make this look as pretty as you like. And again, if you go with a tank that's drilled or that you can drill, just be careful when you do it, running a sump system, you could kind of have everything on the same level. And look at that surface area, All right? We could be rafting here. As long as we're not trying to do a planted tank, which I wouldn't do in this type of situation, there's no reason we couldn't run a rafting system on top of here and then light that. You probably want to do some way of giving some light to your tank just for aesthetics but what you could do is, let's say, a small LED light bar across your back and then your raft ends. And that would actually, if you did a reflective raft on the bottom, that would give you plenty of light down there because you're just lighting it for yourself to see. And then you do your plant lighting above. And I would make all, you know, I would do two, I would do two to three of these. And you make kind of them all the same. So you have one light fixture or one light you know, one, one suspension system to hold your lighting and you could build something like this. It would look just absolutely gorgeous. That somebody would walk into a living room or a sitting room or a parlor or something and be like, wow, that's just gorgeous. And, uh, you could do anything you want with it. Again, I went with native, all native stuff. Everything here is from the, you know, the rocks, the stone, uh, is all the fish is all from, you know, within a few miles around the house. The only exception to be the cactus wood because I had it and uh, it's good for the health of the system and that crappy plastic plant is going to go away. So again, send me your questions and I will try to get you answers. Mr. Deer says goodbye. Please don't shoot me with an arrow again.